If you use a Mac and a PC, you might be tempted to get Apple's new studio display so you can use it for both computers. But I'm here to tell you why that might not be such a good idea. And if you insist, I will walk you through how I finally got this setup to work so you don't have to go through the five cords I went through in order to get the display working. So why is this setup not a great idea for using a PC and specifically in my case, a gaming PC? First, the studio display is a 5K 60 Hertz display. So if you're a serious gamer, you're likely going to want to display with a higher refresh rate and you also probably don't need a 5K display and will be fine with just a 4K display. But what if you really like the color accuracy of the studio display, the overall look, what's the issue with using it with a PC? The second reason using this display with a Windows PC isn't a great idea is there's no native way within Windows to control its brightness. You can only control its brightness using a Mac and there's no button anywhere on the studio display to get to some menu to adjust its brightness like you see with most other monitors. The third reason this is a bad idea is unlike most monitors, it only has one single port for display input. In this case, a Thunderbolt 3 port. While there are four USB-C ports in total on the back, the other three are downstream connections meant for connecting peripherals, storage, and networking devices. So if you want to switch inputs, you'll need to manually unplug one USB-C cable from your Mac and then plug in the other one from your PC. So after hearing all of those downsides, if you still think this is a good idea, well, here's what happened to me when I tried to get this set up to work. I looked at the back of my PC, which is an HP Omen 30L with an AMD Radeon RX 6700 XT graphics card. The graphics card has three DisplayPort outputs plus one HDMI output. So I ordered a cable off Amazon that's one side USB-C and the other side DisplayPort. I got the cord, plugged it into the PC, and then the studio display, and nothing happened thinking, well, I just must have got a bad cord. I bought several different ones on Amazon from different brands, even one that was HDMI to USB-C, even though I didn't think that one was going to work. I plugged them in one by one and absolutely none of them worked. And by this time I'm thinking, okay, what the hell is going on here? Well, here's what was going on. The studio display, it's expecting a Thunderbolt signal. Now, a lot of PCs don't have Thunderbolt and that's actually okay. When it doesn't get a Thunderbolt signal, the studio display will happily take a display 1.4 signal. Now here's where the problem is though. It seems like the studio display will only take a DisplayPort 1.4 signal if the cable you're using has a high enough bandwidth. And a lot of the cables you see on Amazon that have one DisplayPort end and one USB-C end, they're made to plug the USB-C end into your computer and the DisplayPort end into your monitor. And shout out to Justin Searles who wrote a blog post, which I'll link down below, about his own experience trying to do this and he pointed me in the direction of a DisplayPort to USB-C cable made by Cable Matters on Amazon that worked for him and I've left the link to this cord in the description below. So I bought this cable, I plugged it into the PC, and then I plugged it into the studio display, and it worked. And not only did it work, it was displaying Windows in glorious 5K. So I finally got this setup to work, but it's still probably not optimal for a lot of people out there who want to use the studio display's camera and its speakers, because in order to use those, you'll need to actually use Thunderbolt from the PC to the studio display. And about the only other way I've seen to get Thunderbolt onto a PC that doesn't already support it is to buy a Thunderbolt card and plug it in directly to the motherboard. Like the GC Titan Ridge card made by Gigabyte where it'll fit into one of the open PCIe slots on your computer's motherboard. And then you can plug in a DisplayPort cable from your graphics card into the Thunderbolt card and then use a Thunderbolt cord to plug your PC into the studio display. All right, I know this has been a lot and hopefully this helps walk you through why I don't think this setup is optimal at all for Windows PC users. But it also helps illustrate like, it shouldn't be this hard to connect even two Macs simultaneously into a single studio display and then just switch imports so you're not always unplugging cords. And certainly it should not be this hard to connect a PC into a display no matter who made the display. 
This will certainly be something I'll cover in the full six months later review of the studio display. So if you want to see that review, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. If you have any further questions, leave them in a comment below. And if you found this video entertaining, watching my torment trying to get this setup to work, or if you found it helpful, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're looking for what to watch next, check out some of our other Apple reviews, like our review of the iPhone 13 Pro, iPad mini, Apple TV 4K, and the HomePod mini. For six months later, I'm Josh Tedder. Thanks for watching.